This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. Yet another mass escape from a casino causes grave concern. A police chief is charged with beating a disabled man whilst he's in handcuffs. And drunk drivers are causing carnage in the capital. But first, to our main story. Yet again, the problems of organised crime within the kingdom become more than apparent when over 50 Vietnamese staged a mass breakout from a border casino. This very public display has done little to improve Cambodia's reputation of not doing enough to stop illegal slavery within its borders. Over 50 Vietnamese workers fled a casino in Sva Reng province, near the border with Vietnam. The escape was captured on film by locals, and what locals also reported that many men in black uniforms chased after the escapees, and those that fell in their bid to escape were beaten by these men. One of the escapees said he was tricked into working for the Cambodian casino three months ago. He said he and many others were put up on the eighth floor and forced into slavery, working on computers for long hours, running a gambling scam. He said the escapee's plan was just to run in the desperate hope of seeking help from anyone outside the casino. Another escapee said... When we broke open the doors on the 8th floor, there were just a few guards, but when we reached the casino gate, guards chased after us and beat us with canes. Around 10 of us were recaptured. This is the second escape by Vietnamese workers in Cambodia reported in the past month. In August, 40 Vietnamese swam across a river to escape a casino. One teenage boy drowned in his bid for freedom. It is yet another black eye for law enforcement who are battling hard to stamp out this illegal slave trade. A disturbing story of the abuse of power by a police chief emerged this week. The senior police officer is facing investigation after being accused of beating and torturing a deaf man who complained about illegal cockfighting. Only to be savagely beaten. The police chief of Treng Triang Police Station has been accused of beating and torturing a man at the police station late one night. A 70-year-old mother lodged the complaint saying that her 40-year-old son and herself had grown tired of the illegal cockfights, which caused a great disturbance at night to all those that lived in the vicinity. Her son took action and threw stones at the building where the fights were held to protest the excessive noise. But the response he received was beyond anything he could have imagined. Later that night, four policemen in a red Highlander arrived at the complainant's home and handcuffed the victim. They then pushed him into the car and took him to the police station. At the station, the enraged police chief set about the man and punched him in the face repeatedly whilst he was handcuffed and defenceless. The mother said that her son had told her how the police chief and his accomplices had beat and tortured him. The mother confirmed that when she arrived home, she saw her son's face was swollen, bruised and cracked from a severe beating at the hands of the police chief. The investigation is ongoing. This year, the rain has caused flooding nationwide, and it's not only the cities that have been affected. Farmers have seen devastating rains, and in response, soldiers have been dispatched to help harvest rice in flooded areas, so disaster can be averted. Farmers in Bante Minche are facing an apocalyptic scenario with their fields submerged by flood water and no chance of harvesting their crops. And the barrage of rain seems to never stop. As a response, soldiers have been called in to help harvest the rice in Bante Minche's flooded rice fields, as many could face economic ruin. 
The soldiers were instructed to harvest the rice in the flooded fields so that the livelihoods of these farmers is not left rotting. It would have been a disaster for farmers to lose an entire cash crop to the waters, one that would have left them close, if not beyond, the poverty line. Cambodians have been instructed to brace for yet more rain and possible flooding. Several provinces have reported flooding in their rice fields and harvesting has slowed down due to the excessive rain. The situation for some is critical and some farmers are now in a desperate situation with their livelihoods at stake. Drunk drivers within the kingdom are fast becoming a blight. With cars becoming more popular, there seems little restraint in these accidents involving intoxicated drivers. In Phnom Penh, there seems to be a record number of incidents this week, and many are calling for stiffer sentencing for those that needlessly endanger the lives of others. In this first incident, a drunk driver defied the laws of gravity early one morning after he flipped his car following a late night drinking session. The accident occurred at 6.30 a.m. along the Russian boulevard in Phnom Penh. Sources at the scene said that before the incident, a man who seemed visibly intoxicated was seen driving a red Toyota Prius at high speed. The man lost control of his vehicle, hit another car and was travelling at such a speed he managed to flip what is a substantial vehicle upside down. The man was arrested by police and taken for questioning. The second drunk driving incident to happen in the capital caused yet more late night mayhem. The inebriated driver vividly illustrated the dangers of driving whilst intoxicated, especially within the confined restraints of a capital city, where any loss of control of a vehicle is potentially deadly, considering not only pedestrians, but the majority of commuters who are on motorcycles and are exposed to any impact that could well prove fatal. The guilty driver did the traditional, and he fled the scene. But after the incident, a representative of the driver came forward to negotiate compensation. And if you think this week's carnival of flipped vehicles is reserved to cars, you would be wrong. A suspected drunken Parsap driver also managed to end up looking skyward after he crashed into a Peugeot whilst travelling along Route 230. Witnesses reported the appearance of a tuk-tuk driving recklessly and it smashed into the side of the car. The tuk-tuk then flipped on its side, and the drunken driver did not suffer serious injuries, but has been forced to pay damages. These kinds of incidents are becoming worryingly frequent, and are of serious danger to the general public. In business news, Cambodia's exports to the United States are up by 37% this year. And considering that the US is Cambodia's largest importer of goods, that number is very significant and was achieved in just the first eight months of 2022, making it that much more impressive. Cambodia's exports to the US touched 6.4% billion dollars, an increase of 37% compared to the same period in 2021. Most of the goods Cambodia exports include clothing, shoes, travel goods and agricultural products. From the US, it imports cars, electronics and medicines. Cambodia's US trade relations have had significant growth over the past few years. In 2021, Cambodia-US trade volume was up to more than $7.8 billion. The Royal Academy of Cambodia told the Khmer Times that the positive trade performance between the two countries was due to good diplomatic and business relationships. From commercial data, it has been observed that demand for products from Cambodia is higher than ever before. And the Academy said there was also relocation of factories from neighbouring countries to Cambodia to take advantage of the early reopening of the economy. And this has contributed to the spike in production and exports. After the pandemic downturn, these numbers 
will be most warmly received. And now it's time to look at our sports news. Sport is dominated by the Premier League this week and it sees a London club return to the top slot. But many fixtures were postponed following the death of Queen Elizabeth II and a number of other games were also postponed as a result of industrial action on the rail network. So let's have a quick look at those results. And what we see is A is for Arsenal. They get three very valuable points when they beat Brentford. But the biggest fight of them all was at Tottenham this week, where eight goals were scored when they took on Leicester City. And as we flip to the league itself, what we see is Arsenal right at the top. It is those three points against Brentford that put them there. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. And this is the weather for the following week and it is quite simply atrocious. There has been severe flooding in Siem Rip. There's flooding on the outskirts of Phnom Penh and those farmers on those rice fields are taking a terrible battering. And look at the humidity, 98%. This has been the Khmer Times News. You can contact myself at the studio by mailing us at ktnewsstudio at gmail.com. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next Saturday for your weekly roundup.